1956, Kazuya Sejima was born. Like every child, she had big dreams. It just so happened that she wanted to be a grandma. But that didn't work out. So when it came time to decide her future, Sejima couldn't choose. She was so confused. But then she remembered a photo of the Scott house that she found years ago and could never forget. And boom! So after many cups of coffee, sleepless nights, late submissions, more huh? coffee, depression, <laughs> vending machine food, more coffee, she graduated. And so it began. She started working for an architect called Toyo Ito. But she wanted more. She quit and she started her own firm. See that guy over there? Yeah, yeah, that one. You're gonna wanna remember him. Now let's pause her story for a while. In 1966, loads of babies were born, but there was one who rose above them all. As a boy, Ryu was interested in many things, but he showed exceptional promise in a few. Noticing that, his teacher suggested that he pursue architecture. And it helped that his brother was an architect too. So he went to pursue a higher education. Remember this guy? That's Ryu! He joined Sejima in her firm. Together they formed a new one and that's how Sana came about. The Japanese philosophy in regards to architecture is one that harmonizes the traditional Japanese beliefs and culture with the rapid changes of the modern world. Design concepts commonly derived from religious teachings, mainly Shintoism with its emphasis on nature and Buddhism with its teachings of Zen, are paired with the latest developments in building technology and materials. The traditional Japanese aesthetic view is a celebration of the impermanent, imperfect and incomplete and when fused with the daily challenge of designing with minimal amount of physical space often leads to interesting results. Here is the plan. Nishizawa started with the concept of designing a house as a city. It is composed of many different units, each of which is broken down into the size of a single room. It redefines private and community living, such that five different families can live in this residence without any hindrance to their privacy. As you can see, the design is made of two repetitive shapes and a variation of rectangles. This makes for an organized plan with a centralized spatial quality. The human interaction within the space is quite deliberate. It allows for a primarily private usage for each unit, but the negative space created is just sufficient enough for impromptu interaction and gatherings between the tenants and passerbys. The section can be seen reflected in the plan. There is a uniformity in the shapes used in the design, enabling a seamless transition of the outside and inside spaces. As you can see in this section, there is a variation in the height and position of each unit. This is to maintain the privacy amongst the individual units as each wall has an opening, and if not carefully thought out, one could easily peer into another unit. Sana's designs are subtle. They place a great emphasis on the integration of outside and inside, so they are not just designing a building. They're creating an experience unique to each person. 